All right, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. My name is Brian, also known as OCD Mindful. Hey, today I wanna make a video that um, hopefully will be a very powerful and helpful video for you that you can come back to um, when you are feeling totally overwhelmed by your OCD and feeling like you're ready to give in and ritualize. Okay, so I give you permission even though I tell most of the people who work with me, don't go back and rewatch my videos over and over. Don't rewatch videos you've watched over and over. There's something very OCD about that. Um, but this video, as always, I'm not gonna give you any reassurance. I'm going to give you, hopefully, um, some powerful talking points that can give you the motivation and encouragement to stick with treatment, even in those really rough times. So, um, here is why I would say stick with what's proven will work, the treatment of exposure response prevention. Um, don't give in at all to your rituals, even though you really feel like you need to right now. First reason why, and I've made a whole video about this, that tough thing that you're feeling right now, that thing that you feel like you need to escape, the thing that you feel like you can't tolerate anymore. That is the reason you have OCD. Okay, people who don't have a, in, an intolerance of anxiety, an intolerance of uncertainty, people who don't have perfectionistic standards for themselves, we could give them, we could suggest that a that hundred different OCD themes might be true for them and they won't care, okay? Now, it's easy to just say they don't have OCD. But yeah, the reason they don't have OCD is because they don't have such a low uh, tolerance for feeling crappy, for intrusive thoughts and feelings, um, and for, you know, for the anxiety that is driving this entire thing for you. So right now, you are feeling very anxious, okay? What I say to that is, good. Be grateful for that. When you are feeling that, when you are feeling like you're on the verge of giving in and your OCD is, is um, too powerful right now, those are your real moments. Those are your real moments to make progress. Okay, um, so as hard as it feels, this doesn't mean you have to like your feelings. In fact, I would encourage you to say, hey, crappy feelings, stick around as long as you want. During exposures, you're intentionally making those feelings come up and making them feel worse. And the people that really get better are the people who say, yes, bring me more of this because I trust treatment. I trust that by flooding myself with this crap feeling, by intentionally creating the thought, by telling myself it may never go away, I may never get an answer to this, I may lose my, my identity completely, um, and I am willing to allow the feelings to be there and then to literally do nothing about the thoughts. Do zero problem solving, do zero figuring out, zero analyzing. I mean this entirely. Imagine that part of your brain has been surgically removed that can, can deal with your particular OCD theme. That's just, okay, this is how we're gonna live now. Walk away from it. Allow yourself to feel crappy. Walk away from it. Um, second thing is having gone through this and now understanding how it works as well as I do. If I could go back and talk to myself from 10 years ago, every time I did a little mini ritual, every time I looked for reassurance, every time that I wasn't fully accepting and embracing uncertainty, I would have grabbed myself and said, trust me, me from 10 years into the future knows better and you are only stalling your progress, okay? It is your intolerance for feeling this way that is keeping this alive. So instead, turn it on its head. Don't give the OCD anywhere to hide. Intentionally seek it out and say, hey, the more I can allow you to come in without trying to do anything about you, the stronger I get. The more my tolerance for uncertainty and anxiety uh, builds, and that is what treatment is. That is what treatment is. Um, so 
you know, it, I, it's very obvious to me when I talk to people who, who is really going to have a good outcome and who's going to be spinning their wheels for a long time. Um, and it's become more and more obvious the longer I've been working with people. It is the people that say like, okay, look, I understand. I have these crappy feelings. I don't want them. I can't tolerate the, the uncertainty. I can't tolerate the anxiety, but I do have faith in the treatment. And because of that, and because I know that all of these rituals literally don't work and only make me worse, then I, then I know it's worth it to take that leap of faith and to stick with the treatment. I also know that habituation works by actually feeling the crap feelings that come up. And therefore, I should look for them. Okay? And again, that doesn't mean you like them while they're there. But it does mean that you can remind yourself, hey, while this is here is my true opportunity. Okay? Um, and then there's other things I would advise if you do just feel too overwhelmed by it. Okay, distraction, refocusing, keeping your mind occupied on something else, although that would not be my first choice, is better than ritualizing. Okay, so my advice there would be go find something that even is as hard as it is to stay in that zone, go try to find something to keep your mind occupied. Go for a walk, talk to a friend, write in a journal about something completely unrelated to OCD, watch a movie, um, whatever it might be. Okay, and again, that's only if you genuinely feel like you, you, you've given up, you've, you're on your, the, the last leg here before you are about to ritualize. Because I would say don't even do that. I would say instead, if you can tolerate longer, then yeah, stay there with it. Okay, cool. Um, this crappy feeling is here. I've been here a million times before. And instead of trying to run away from it, I'm going to lean into it. And I'm going to just watch what happens. Um, and an another suggestion, I do have a guided meditation on here from years and years ago. And I occasionally go back and watch it because as I've learned more, I, I want to make sure that, um, you know, my updated beliefs are not in conflict with stuff that I was saying in the past. And the truth is that video still holds up. I mean, that was the practice that I was doing in the face of OCD when I finally accepted uncertainty, when I finally stopped giving in completely to rituals. And um, that is a very powerful meditation in that it's not attempting, it's not striving to do anything other than completely invite your feelings in and just be with them. And here's the amazing thing. Um, if, if you were to just do this, let's just do this together for two minutes. I'm gonna ask you to just uh, sit with your eyes closed, okay? And you may already be feeling better just from watching this video and watching this <clears throat> idiot that I am just spout out a bunch of stuff. Um, but let's do this, a, just a two minute uh, meditation here where I can kind of drill some, some important thoughts and ideas into your head. So this is another option you can do instead of ritualizing. I want you to just close your eyes and I want you to use what's called beginner's mind in the mindfulness practice. Beginner's mind is just a, a sort of curiosity a sort of friendly, open inquiry about what's going on in the world around you or inside your own body or inside your own brain. It's a, hmm, what is this? I want you to bring this line of attitude to the feeling that's going on in your body. At the end of the day, this is all OCD is. It is your intolerance of feeling what's happening right now. Hmm. Okay, what is this anxiety? You need to fully allow yourself to feel it. For me, stuff still lives in my chest, even though I've made a lot of progress. There are days where it's just there, it's living in my chest. And, hmm, 
just uh, mildly curious. What is this feeling? And to recognize that on a physiological level, the feeling of anxiety is nearly identical to the feeling of excitement. I'm going to say that again. The feeling of anxiety, the tightness, the butterflies, maybe the sweatiness, the heart racing, is almost physiologically identical to the feeling of excitement. Excitement about a trip you're going to take. Excitement about seeing someone you haven't seen in a long time. Excitement about doing something a little bit new and adventurous. And then turn the question to this feeling, is it really this intolerable? What happens if I completely take my hands off the wheel and give up every ounce of control? Give up control over how long this stays around, how intense it is. Give up any control over trying to change anything at all. Recognizing that this is just a feeling in the body. And now taking an even deeper step. This is getting into a little bit of what's called the Dzogchen practice of non-dualism, of recognizing something. Ask yourself the question, who is aware of this feeling in my body? Who is aware of my awareness? And I want you to just ponder that for 30 seconds. See if you can find the one who is aware, the one that is mindful. Is there someone there sort of behind the curtain? And what you might realize when you turn attention in on itself like this and ask who's actually aware of the awareness, you might realize something very profound. That there is actually nothing there other than consciousness itself. There is no mini you sitting in your brain that sort of takes on a second level of suffering. This is the essence of non-dualism. And it has continued to change my life. And of course, this is a very cursory introduction to it. But the recognition that there is nothing behind consciousness. Consciousness is the deepest state. It is everything that exists. And if we can sit with that attention turned in on itself, we can really begin to change our relationship to anything that is present in our field of consciousness. I 
And what I don't want you to be doing is expecting some miraculous two minute change here where your crummy feelings just go away. That is striving. And this practice is the opposite of striving. It is non-striving. It is letting be. It is having patience. And for your OCD, most importantly, it is the learning that these feelings do not have to have any control over you at all. And I don't want to go too on too long on this meditation. If you want to continue something like this, you can sit here on your own. But at this point, you can feel free to open your eyes. And feel free to watch this video and do that little practice, not expecting to get anywhere. If there's any goal to be had there, it should just be the goal of learning that you actually can tolerate these feelings. Your current state of OCD that is um, demanding that you change something, that is demanding that something be different, any desire to be different, um, that is lying to you. OCD is the great liar lying to you and telling you that you can't tolerate this. Um, just remember, treatment is hard in the beginning. Feelings are real. They are hard. The practice here is allow those feelings to come in completely. Take on the attitude of come and get me. The more I can take of you, the more I can intentionally seek you out, and the more I can then just walk away. Just walk away. I know it feels impossible. I want you to just try. Okay, maybe, maybe not. Maybe I'll never know. Maybe I'll never get a certainty. Maybe I'll never find my identity. I don't even feel like myself anymore. Maybe that'll never change. Maybe my libido will never come back. Maybe I am a pedophile. Maybe I will kill my family in the middle of the night. Maybe I have a brain tumor. There is no way to intellectually figure this out. The more you tussle with it, the worse your OCD gets. And so, Find that, you know, that inner strength, it's in there. I promise you, I guarantee you, you do not need to engage. Okay, hopefully that helps some of you. Again, if you feel like you are in the throes of it and you're about to give in and you're about to ritualize, come watch this video. Maybe it'll give you some motivation. Maybe by doing that short meditation, it'll get you to see that these are just feelings. They come and they go. I don't need to do anything to try to control them. Um, maybe it'll help you just stay the course. And if it doesn't, if you feel crappier after this video, remember, that's a good thing. It's a good thing for treatment. That's more that you have to build up your resistance to. So there is no lose. When you have this mindset, There is. it's a win-win. All right. Okay. Hopefully that helped. Um, feel free to leave a comment and do me a favor. I have noticed that um, I get notifications all the time that I got comments. And then when I go to find them, they're not there. For some reason, YouTube just censors them out. So if you left a comment and you see that it didn't go up, try to repost it. I'm loving the sort of community that's being built here on this page because I'm seeing so many people that really understand this treatment answering other people's questions, and it's great to see that. Um, feel free to shoot me an email if you have specific questions and you'd rather not post them publicly. I'm at ocdmindful at gmail.com. And if you want to learn more about mindfulness meditation and ERP and how to make a specific um, ERP hierarchy for your OCD, um, 
feel free to hit me up. Okay, see ya.